us that we humble ourselves before God and call upon his name. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful, we are thankful for how you've led us. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that you'll be with us, teach us through your word. We pray that we may assimilate the food that we are going to eat, that it might be beneficial to our spiritual walk with you, God, that we will grow and become more like you. Thank you for everyone who has gathered here tonight. We pray that you will bless them individually, bless them as a family, bless them, O oh God, and let, it, let, let not this be uh, an effort in futility. It's not in vain. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, tonight I'd like to ask you to help me a little bit so we can engage a little bit. Uh, we're looking at um, Genesis chapter 28, which is where our, our study has brought us to. And Genesis chapter 28 verse 20 21 and 22 genesis chapter 28 verse uh, verse 20 21 and 22 and i'm just gonna read it and then you tell me what you think about that then jacob made a vow can you hear me now me bring this let me know whether the volume is um is okay thank you so uh, Genesis chapter 28 sorry about that Genesis chapter 28 verse 20 21 and 22 and I'm just gonna read this and then you tell me what you think then Jacob made a vow saying if God would be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace then the Lord shall be my God and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be god's house and of all that you give me i will surely give a tenth to you it is a prayer it is a vow that uh jacob has made and thank you michael for putting that in the chat for us what do you think about that prayer what do you think is it conditional prayer <laughs> Okay, there's a condition okay someone else thank you Michael uh, good people you can just put it in the chat uh, you don't what what is um, and, and, and I'm actually not asking for the right answer I don't know that there's a right answer I'm just asking about your opinion what do you think of that prayer or of the vow that he has made to God. Come, come on, people! I, I know we have more than Michael. Um, I see your names. Yes, Grace says it seems like it's conditional. Okay, it's a bargain. It's a promise. It's a commitment. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Francis. Uh, anyone else? what do you think let's let's go back and get a is a test it's a prayer of acknowledgement of some okay all right and actually uh, you know these answers are consistent with what uh, tit for tat thing yes uh, it is consistent with what many people think you know there's some who think this is an excellent prayer it's a commitment the others who are asking what is jacob trying to do here once we get the context Remember, it started last week uh, when you read chapter 27 that uh, the brother Esau has made a vow. Say, when all is said and done, in this household, we're going to have two funerals. When all is said and done in this household, right in our compound, we're going to have two graves. One will be for my father who has died of natural causes and the other one will be for my brother and it will be because I've killed him. I'm going to kill him. But I'm just going to wait until we, we get done burying dad and then I'm going to deal with him. And so uh, Rebecca enters into the picture and says to Jacob, this place is no longer safe for you. You need to run away because your brother wants to kill you. And so he gets ready. He departs and he goes to the land where Laban, the uncle, is living. 
but it is a far place uh, he has to walk for many miles it is a far place he has to go for days on end night and day and i want to ask you again and today I, I want you to engage with me what do you think is going on through his mind as he's walking going to laban's place it is a very very long journey he is alone so he has all the time to think no one to talk to he has all the time to think what are some of the things he's thinking about maybe he's worried about the decisions he has made the decisions that have brought him to this place maybe he's even asking was this really a blessing from my father maybe he's even asking was it worth it because the friendship that was there between him and Esau is gone you know is it really worth it because he's no longer able to be with his mother uh you know he's gone it's a long journey it's a lonely journey and i'm quite sure it was very discouraging as he thinks about what's going on and truly enough on this journey many times uh, we see a picture of how satan operates before you fall into sin satan tells you it's a small thing it's not a big deal no one cares about these things anymore come on man i, I mean really it's it's not that serious you know lighten up a little bit you know and then of course once he succeeds in uh, tempting you and then you're on the other side he fills you with guilt now there's good guilt and there's bad guilt the good guilt that makes us to move forward and take an action of faith that's good guilt is actually brought about by god but the bad guilt that satan brings is he tells you it's over this is over there's no way you can be forgiven look at you do you even call yourself a christian is this what christians uh, are supposed to do is this how they behave there is no mercy for you there's no pardon for you and i'm quite sure this is what was happening to jacob was it worth it such a liar look at you you've swindled your brother now he wants to kill you you should have been dead and it is during this time that when satan was assaulting him with all these thoughts that he falls asleep it's late at night he's been walking he's probably hungry he falls to sleep he puts a stone as a pillow and then the blessing of our god god who comes to us in our low moments god who comes to us when we think we've lost everything god who comes to us when we are lonely god comes to us when we uh, think that um, everyone has forsaken us god comes to us not to condemn god comes to us not to rehash all things but to encourage someone say amen the bible says he dreamt and behold a ladder was set up on earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of god were ascending and descending on it god brought about this dream to let jacob know yes you've sinned and yes what you've done is not right but i still got your back i'm still with you he shows him a vision of a ladder and this ladder is going up and up and he is the connection between us and god and so in that very night to this sinner to this person who is broken to this person who is lonely and destitute jesus who is the ladder the connection between us and heaven shows up to encourage this man and in his dream state and actually this was not a dream because jacob himself actually says this is not a dream it actually took place it happened in this state god shows up and this is what God says to him in verse 15. I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. This is the first time that God is repeating this promise to this patriarch. God, who is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, has now become the God of Jacob as well. He's repeating the same promise. I am the God of your father, your grandfather, and I'm going, number one, and actually you know i'm going to ask you to help me here let's list out the promises that god is making uh so when you see it or when you hear it just put it in the chat for us i'm the lord god of abraham your father and the god of isaac the land on which you lie 
I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the east and to the west, to the north and to the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 15, Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Hallelujah. God is saying this land belongs to you. It belongs to you and your descendants. And I will keep the promise that I have made to your father and your grandfather. Then he says to him, I am with you. I will keep you. I will protect you. I will take care of you. The favor of God will be upon you. I will bless you. Amen. And where you go, I will be with you. And I will be careful to bring you back to this land. And so just know, Jacob, that whatever you, you, you're doing right now is only for a temporary measure. Even when you go, I will bring you back and it shall be well with you. Then God says, I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Amen. Amen. God has gone the extra mile to show up to this sinner. God has gone the extra mile. Tell this sinner, I'm, I'm going to, I will not, cannot forsake you. The Bible says he woke up in the morning. And he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I never knew it. Man, there's so many things, man, I want to talk about this. Number one. I don't know who needed to hear this word that God is with you that God will not leave you that God will not forsake you you know friends there are many times we ask the question why God and then we, we follow that with where was God or where is God when you're going through the tribulation the suffering the trials it is so easy to ask that question but God why have you forsaken me even Jesus on the cross it was so real my father my why have you forsaken me but god is telling us there are so many things god will do and there are some things he will never do one of the things he will never do is to forsake you i am with you is god with me even when i am a sinner yeah yeah yes he's still with you psalm 139 says to us even when I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Why? Not because he likes to dwell in hell. No, because he wants to get you even from the depths of sin that you have sunk. I am with you. I will get you out. I want to get you out. I think I've shared here before that there is nothing you can ever do to make God love you more than he already loves you. He loves you to the uttermost. And his love is not conditional. He loves it to the uttermost. Now the opposite of that also is true. There's nothing you can ever do to make God love you less. Nothing. <laughs> There's nothing you can ever do to make God love you less. He loves you not because of you. He loves you because of who he is. And don't ever for a moment think that you're so powerful that your actions can determine how God will react to you. He loves you. There's nothing you can ever do, ever. No sin you will ever do that will make you God love you less. He loves you because of who he is. And he makes this promise. I am with you. I will not leave you. Don't worry, Jacob. I got you back. You go uh, through this sojourn, wherever you're going to be. I'll be with you. I'll take you there. I'll bless you. The favor of God will be upon you. And I'll bring you back. It shall be well. It shall be well. But you know how many times does God appear to us but we are so distracted by so many things of life. So many things of life. He wakes up in the morning and says, My God, God was in this place and I never knew it. How many times have we been to a holy place? And you know, friends, a, a holy place, the holy place is not a place we go to meet God. The holy place is where we are when God meets us. Okay? Holy place is not where we go to meet God. Holy place is where we are when God meets us. And how many times do we have those holy place moments? But we miss it altogether. Oblivious to it. 
maybe because we never had an opportunity to have an encounter with Christ every morning where we get to kneel down and just speak with him and it's like my goodness God was here and I never knew it or maybe even now uh, we've gone to a, a place you know it's, it's a time of prayer it's a time of trusting God like on Sundays when you have that season of prayer and you know sometimes you will just engage as uh, well it's just a program but then you start seeing people getting blessed Abraham Busolo is blessed Jen goes with her blessing sister Shalom goes with a blessing sister Caroline goes with a blessing brother Sammy Wambua sister Dorcas and then it hits you like my goodness Kumbe this thing was serious Kumbe God was in this place and I never knew it Kumbe I was just joking around I took it for granted Kumbe God was showing up to bless his people let us take each moment seriously the Bible says to walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time for the days are evil God is here to bless his presence is there to heal his presence is there to bring about the miracles the favor the breakthroughs that we are looking for if only we can be serious enough to see him if only we can be serious enough to take advantage of his presence amen and so he wakes up in the morning says i never knew it oh my goodness god was in this place i never knew it you know jacob what could have happened if you knew it are there some prayers he could have prayed are there some things he could have asked god are there some things that maybe would have had a, a conversation with god about you're too busy you're too distracted you're too sleepy you are not focused so he says that he was afraid how awesome is this place this is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven no it's not you know this is what happens you're so confused you know he's just trying to compensate <clears throat> then he's trying to overcompensate verse 19 says he called the name of that place Bethel but the name of that city had been loose previously and then now because he wants to compensate sometimes he's overcompensating he prays the prayer that we saw earlier then Jacob made a vow saying now I want you to help me what are the things that Jacob is telling God to do help me here then Jacob made a vow saying if God will be with me if God will keep me in this way that I'm going if God will give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace then the Lord shall be my God what is he praying for what is he asking come on put it in the chat for me verse 20 if God will be with me if God will keep me in this way that I'm going if God will give me bread to eat and clothing to put on if God will bring me back then the Lord shall be my God so you ask yourself the question isn't this what God has already said? God has said, I'll be with you. I will keep you. I will protect you. I will show you favor. And I will bring you back to this land. But what is he saying to God? If God will be with me. If God will keep me. If God will give me food to eat. If God will uh, bring me back. Then the Lord shall be my God. And God must be asking, what? I'm the one who said I'm going to do these things for you. Look at how he's beginning with God. And then he says on top of it, uh, verse 22, And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And all of that you give me, I will surely give a tenth to you. Why? Why? Remember this man. This man is a con man. Remember this man does not understand the grace of God. That God can bless you in spite of you. That God will bless you and he doesn't need anything from you. And you know friends, this is why we have a problem. Many times we have a problem with the grace of God. You know, we come from a culture where if someone does something for you free of charge, you wonder, what's the catch? No, 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 no. What's the catch? And many times we bring that even into our relationship with God. God says, I've given you freely, nothing you need to give back. Agreements with God and agreements with God and beginning with God. God says, if you know, we, we are, we pray God, if you, if you heal me, if you heal me, 
then I'm going to do this. God says, I'm Jehovah Rapha. That's what I do. I'll heal you. That's not a problem. You don't need to make this kind of promises. Oh God, if you will show me your favor. God says, that's, that's what I do. I'm here to show you favor. I'm here to give you breakthroughs. Oh God, if you'll, if you'll move this mountain for me. God says, that's what I'm here for. That's what I've said. I'll give you enough faith that by your prayer, the mountains will be moved. And so instead of us moving to God from a, from a perspective of doubt and bargaining, God wants us to approach the throne of mercy boldly. The person who is saying, God, if you do this, God, if you do that, God, if you do that, is not bold in their prayer. They are trying to bargain with God. They are struggling with doubt. Say, God, if you do great, if you don't do then, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, you will not be my God. And I will not give a tenth to you as if God survives from what you give him. This exposes his doubt. The Bible says to us in James chapter 1, verse 5, 6, 7, and 8, that the person who doubts is like a wave that is tossed to and fro. And that person should not expect anything from God. Thanks be to God. You know what? I'd rather read that. James chapter 1 verse 5. You know, let's, 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 uh, let's just read that as I finish. James chapter 1 verse 5 to 6-7. It says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. Don't even expect that you're going to get anything. God has a throne of mercy boldly and find help, find grace in time of need. Why? Based on who God is, based on the promises that he has given us through his word, based on the fact that he loves us, he will fulfill those promises. But also, as I finish, I see the grace of God here. God looked at this fool because that's who he was. He listened to this fool because that's who he was. And said, Haidru, one day he will learn. He's still learning. God does not chase him away. God does not disqualify him. God does not say, because you have expressed doubt, I'm, I'm done with you. God keeps quiet because those were the old days when God would wink. Then he says, surely, one day he will learn. God does not stop being called the God of Jacob, the patriarch. Even in his stupidity, in his doubt, God still works with him. God finds us where we are. He comes to where we are, but then he takes us from one level to another. I want to encourage you this evening that this weekend as you pray pray to god boldly approach his throne of mercy boldly let me share with you one thing that you can do unlike man um, man does not like to be reminded of their promises but god loves to be reminded of the promises go find a promise in the word of god whatever situation maybe you're going through a financial struggle or maybe you're going through a whatever it is get a promise from the word of god that says that god will do something about your finances about your health about your situation whatever it is write that promise down pray that prayer tell god this is what you've said in your word i believe you and i believe your word and your word actually tells me that it will not return to you void that it will accomplish everything that you have sent it to accomplish. And therefore, on that basis, and knowing that you're faithful, knowing that you're true and this is your word, I trust you to fulfill this for me in accordance with your will. I am telling you, God keeps his word. I am telling you, nothing pleases God more than to see his children expressing not doubt, but faith in him and in his word. And may the Lord bless us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.